This is happiness to be everything at once. Be unblinded, be unlearned, be unbridled and unburned. Hey everyone, welcome back to a brand new episode of Mood Prep. My name is Dave Nixon and uh, today uh, I'm probably going to continue on actually from the conversation that I had on Friday around uh, you're going to die, um, except I want to, I want to, I want to reverse it, I want to position it differently, like the, I want to talk about living, I want to talk about this, this idea and this, this, not even an idea, but this ability we have to truly live in every single moment, like we, we get to choose to do that, right, but the... Sometimes people may fall into this trap of thinking that that acknowledging death is is really morbid and it's you know it's depressing and all this sort of shit. But what it really allows us to do is to recognize it. And when we can, it's like recognizing the front of something also presupposes there's a back, right? We can't have a front without a back. And so when we really truly understand death, then we really deepen our understanding for living, right? This this is this is crucial when we ignore either then that's when we truly never live at all. But our ability to, to then to, to, to acknowledge death and then look at everything else as the opportunity to live because there's, it's not binary. A lot of people, as you've heard me say, may have read in the past as well, a lot of people just get buried. They die at 20 and get buried at 75. I know it's a famous quote by somebody, but the point there being is that there is more to life than paying fucking bills, than doing a job you don't like for people that you can barely stand, to buy things to impress people that you don't even care about, right? To, 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 to own a house that you barely spend time in because you're working this job and, and so on and so forth. Like You have this ability to truly choose what's going to be important for you in, in any moment and how you want to actually live. And sometimes this can become cliche, but... but the thing about cliches is that they're often pointing at things that are true. It's just that we, we, we choose not to understand them on a deeper level. We choose not to really relate with it. We just hear it, know of it, know about it, as opposed to truly hearing it, like really looking at it and seeing how it applies to all of our life. And the interesting thing around it is conditioning, is that for most people listening to this podcast, we, we live in Western-style worlds. What that means is that we live in a world where we, when we grew up and then we went to school and we were told we have to go to school and we told, you know, we have to wear particular things and that's why there's uniforms, right? Uni is in like there's, there's one form that, that's, that's one form for everyone, right? And then we're spe- supposed to somehow embrace our uniqueness um, and, and it's so interesting sort of seeing that and then we go into, into, into high school and we're meant to make a decision about what it is that we want to do with our life in high school or in college, or university, if you want, whatever you call it, basically, from the ages of about 15 to, to 17, it's like we're meant to have it figured out what we want to do, we're not meant to have it figured out, if you don't have it figured out by your 20s, that's fine, you're not meant to have it done by then, if you're comparing it to somebody else, you don't need to do that, that's somebody else's unraveling and development and stages, and, and what might be good for them now, it's like, wow, they're, they're just out of high school and they're earning something, they, right, that's the measurement, hey, they're earning 70k, a year. it's like, that's really good, but what happens if that person never earns any more than that, is that bad, well, why are we using money as a measurement, when did we stop using happiness, right? How do we measure happiness? It's a subjective quality, not an objective quality, right? So there's all these things that go into really choosing how we want to live. But the problem is that there's so many of us just walking around in the life that we're currently living, we're currently currently in, and we're, we're living off rules that were given to us. We didn't choose them, but they were conditioned, they were embedded into us. And we didn't, we, we got to the point now that we're in adults, we just don't question it. And we may even be telling our kids to do the same thing. And so the interesting thing there is we, our ability to go back and question that, it doesn't just change us. It doesn't just potentially change our kids. It changes the world because it goes, hang a sec, maybe this isn't the way things are meant to be done. Maybe this worked at some point for a particular result, but I don't want that result. So maybe this conditioning, this thinking, whatever it may be, it's time for me to change it, right? Because we can change it. 
It, we're not we're not a tree as the analogy goes we, we don't not just stuck in one particular way um, doing the one particular thing where we're able to the, the beauty of, of our human experience is that we're able to choose and things get difficult like I've got kids to feed or I've got a mortgage to pay or you know all this sort of shit but this is why it's so powerful and beneficial to truly go deep into understanding ourselves and, and our patterns and, and, and psychology and thoughts and personality traits and, and communication and, and, and body language and everything, to everything in that space. Because what it allows us to do is to stop living autonomously, just automatically, and to truly start choosing how we want to live each and every single day. That doesn't mean we have to change our mind or do, you know, try and travel every single day. Maybe that's what somebody wants to do, whatever. It doesn't mean that. It means that you're able to, to, to do a job that is, is purposeful for you, for your heart, for your soul, for your head. And there is, there is critical people out there going, that's not possible for every single person, David. But every single person is at different stages. So at some person, working in a factory is the fucking like, thing that gives them purpose. And there is nothing wrong with that at all because it gives them the ability to earn enough for their family and that's the stage that they're at and there is nothing wrong with that right the other person is out there trying to be an entrepreneur but all they're potentially doing is is just still trying to get approval from a parental figure right and so they show this face and it's like you know that's not true and it it, they, they, they they avoid it they avoid the truth right there's there's so many examples so which one's the right which one do we give you know um credit to which one do we give this this approval to the person who's just working the factory job that that is perceived to be a, um you know a standard job or something like that or the, the person trying to go out there and make something of it but the person out there in the entrepreneur space is trying to still just get their approval from a parental figure whilst this person over here in the factory is supporting a family and working their ass off to build a better future for the generations below them see there's too many factors in this neither good nor bad the, the reality is, is that we get to choose. And I don't, whoever's listening to this, whoever you are, you have a different story to the other person that's listening to this. You're at a different stage of development. There's no shoulds. There's no musts. There's no needs. There's get tos. And you get to choose every single day. You get to live every single day. And so sometimes, for somebody who, who's emerging to a new stage of development, they, they end up being in this space where they ask questions such as like, is this all there fucking is? I, th- I thought I thought I was meant to arrive, or maybe it's something along the lines of, I'm done doing this shit. Th- I-, I have more in me. I just don't know where to start. And you've got to ask questions. Hey, you've got to ask questions to really find out what what is the next step. You don't need to know all the steps. But to live here now is to be true to what's true for you. Not just the things you want to be true or wish to be true, all of it in your relationships, right? I've seen those statistics on my podcast. I know there's a chance that someone listening to this is in a relationship that they probably shouldn't be in. That, that, that they're just, they're afraid of being by themselves. And here they are saying that they're living. They're not, it's not living. You're not choosing to be, choosing to be true to yourself. That's an example, right? The relationship could be a parental relationship. It could be a business relationship. It could be anything. But what I'm pointing at here, no matter what, is being fucking 100% true to what's true for you. And there's layers to it. Because the more you lean into what's true for you, the more you find out what is true for you. The further you go down that, on a deeper level, not just this superficial level, right? You stop being distracted by all the shit, by the TV shows, by Facebook, by social media, right? By 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 comparison, right? By marketing, by you stop being distracted. You see through it all and realize that none of that actually matters. It just it's just trying to get your fucking attention so you can just live automatically and keep buying shit you don't need. To true doesn't mean you can't buy fun things. By the way, I'm all for it. Clearly, on some level, but but what I'm getting at at the core of it. I'll finish up after this. Is making sure that you're consciously choosing exactly how you want to live and either be working towards that and know you're working towards that 
But during that process, live in the process, live in every single moment, appreciate every single step of the step of the process, the hard parts, the easy parts, the fun parts, the sad parts, all of it. I had a friend, I had a friend yesterday, I had more than one friend yesterday, still friends, who we had a mutual friend pass away. He, he, he knew them significantly more than me. He's like, I'm sick of bearing my mates. It's like, yeah, you may not be in control of that. Right, but what you are in control of is making sure that you, none of your mates ever have to do that. That you get a choice to fucking use their their life as a reason to live. Right, that's the power that we have every single day. And starting this on a Monday, that's the power you have today to start your week off. On that note, team, I am out. Thank you very much for tuning in. If you found this podcast beneficial, it would mean the world to me. If you'd pass it on to someone else that you think would also find it beneficial. If you haven't already, then jump on Facebook, search Move Prep Online. I have a live Q&A this Sunday coming up in there. I'd love to see you in there. Otherwise, team, that's it. I'm out. Until tomorrow, you know the deal. Peace and pizza. Kick today in the dick. Slay the dragon. I'll see you soon. To be everything at once. Be unblinded, be unlearned. Be unbridled and unburned